Hi. In this case, I'll be demonstrating the use of a snare to bisect the nucleus in antechamber. So this is a 75-year-old lady who has presented with phacomorphic glaucoma and with anti-glaucoma medications and topical steroids, the pressure and the inflammation has been kept under control and now she's scheduled for surgery. On slit lamp examination, what is obvious is the antechamber depth is quite shallow and uh, it's around 2 mm and the lens obviously is very swollen and getting the rexus right is going to be a challenge. The surgery is being done under posterior subtenance anesthesia. I'm injecting about 1 ml of uh, lignocaine in the posterior subtenance space in the inferior medial quadrant. The conjunctival flap is created. And the bleeding superficial epithelial vessels are cauterized. This will help me to see well. I'm using a fixation ring to stabilize the globe and an external frown shaped scleral incision is being made. About The scleral groove is about 1.5 mm from the limbus in the central part. The sclerocorneal tunnel is measuring about 5.5 to 6 mm in length. The inner part of the corneal dissection is also carried out. And now is the time to perform the side port incisions. Since I'm going to use by manual INA for cortex aspiration, I'm using these MVR blades to create those uh, small side ports. The anterocapsule is stained and the antechamber is being filled with the dispersive OVD to maintain a deep antechamber and also to protect the corneal endothelium. Now with the antechamber being pressurized with the OVD, I'm going to enter through the main wound and create the internal incision. So I'm going to use a 2.8 mm bivalve sharp keratome. I enter it in the central part and, and then I'm going to extend it laterally on either side. So the internal entry would be 0.5 mm or 1 mm longer than the external scleral incision. The plan is to do a two-stage rexus and there is a higher chance of the rexus running away to the periphery during the primary smaller rexus itself. So I'm going to use a combination of tearing technique predominantly and shearing technique when the need arises. So let me demonstrate the tearing technique here. I puncture the anticapsule with the forceps itself and then the flap is raised and as I'm tearing, I'm trying to keep the flap flat, not everted. So keeping the flap flat and then pulling it centripetally is the tearing method. In these highly tense capsules, the moment we fold and try to use the shearing method of rexus creation, there is a higher risk of it running away. So keeping the flap flat and pulling it centripetally is the way to go and it is not, it doesn't give us great control but definitely the risk of it running away is significantly lesser. So I have a smaller primer rexus. It's slightly eccentric but not an issue at all. It will be corrected during the secondary rexus. Time to decompress the lens. I'm going to use the bimanual INA to decompress the bag. The irrigation is held in the antechamber itself whereas the aspiration cannula goes into the capsular bag and teases out all the superficial swollen cortex and the epinucleus. Once I feel that the bag is considerably decompressed, I'm going to put in more OVD in the antechamber. And now is the time to do the second rexus. A tangential cut is given to the rexus margin using a micro scissors from the side port. The flap is raised and I'm going back with my forceps, gripping the flap and then enlarging the tear. So eventually I have a nice, reasonably well centered 5 mm rexus. The other half of the rexus is similarly enlarged. By using two Sinsky hooks, the nucleus is mobilized out of the capsular bag into the antechamber. OVD is placed around the nucleus just to create some space both beneath and above the nucleus. 
and uh, now is the time to introduce the snare as we all know dr anil shah has devised uh, this snare and i'm going to use this device it has got this loop and it's introduced into the anti chamber in a slanted format and then it goes in and hook the nucleus I just i'm trying to ensure that the snare is exactly at the center of the nucleus and once i'm certain that it's all right I'm going to pull the string which is going to close the snare and along with it the nucleus snaps quickly into two halves. I'm injecting OVD in the bisected area just to separate these two fragments and again under the cover of the OVD each of these pieces is going to be extracted out. I'm going to use Vectis in the dialer and the classical Faco sandwich technique. Ideally we need to have a Vectis which is much more smaller than what I'm using here. but it is working well but ideally i would prefer to have a smaller vectis similarly the ovd is refilled and the second piece is then again sandwiched and pulled out and then using the irrigation can i'm just trying to burp out some of the free cortex by manual line is used to perform the cortex aspiration The poster capsule is blown with the BSS just to polish it. OVD is placed into the capsule bag and a foldable single piece hydrophobic lens is implanted into the capsule bag. The trailing haptic is notched in. It looks all right. Now is the time to remove the OVD. I'm going in with my irrigation cannula and just trying to remove all the OVD in front of the lens. The lens is tipped and the irrigating hand piece goes underneath the lens and then irrigates out all the OVD which is sticking out of the back surface of the IOL and also the capsule bag. Once the capsule bag is nice and clean, time to close. The side ports are hydrated with BSS and I'm going to close the conjunctival flap with the glue itself. These are the first day post op pictures. The some amount of corneal edema is spread warrantly because of the pre-existing inflammation and raised intraocular pressure. But on the first day, the pressures were normal. Eventually, the patient did well. So to conclude, snare is a very effective way to bisect the nucleus. It is doesn't have a very long learning curve, as I realized, and I think it adds tremendous value in giving better uncorrected visual acuity because the amount of incision required to bring out these cut pieces is significantly lesser. And if you can combine this with a temporal incision, the results are going to be very much comparable to that of phacoemulsification. So thank you so much for attention and hope you found this helpful